Building a successful Amazon FBA business comes down to finding good products. And to find good products requires having the right tools and not just any set of tools. Product research is the most important part of the Amazon private label business model. And it's also the most time consuming. So it's crucial to use tools that make doing product research faster and easier. In this video, I'll show you a product research tool suite that I use called AMZ Scout to find profitable products and how to properly set up and use the web app and Chrome extension to find profitable products fast. But first, my name is Crescent and on my channel I share tips and strategy videos just like this one on how you can create a successful Amazon FBA private label business. So if you enjoy videos like this, consider subscribing. All right, let's get started. All right, so I always like to mention first in all of my product research videos that before you do any product research, you need to sit down and put together a plan. Failing to plan is planning to fail. So if you want to do product research quickly and successfully, you need to know what your goals are while you're doing product research. I have a video here that goes over planning that you should go and watch now if you want to learn more about this step. Now, once you have a plan, you can move on to the other two stages of product research and that's product discovery and niche analysis. And this is where the AMZ Scout tool suite will help you find and analyze the product ideas you come up with. AMZ Scout has powerful tools to help you during each stage. For product discovery, they have the web app or the product database tool. This tool has collected data on all the products in the Amazon marketplace and will help you find potential product ideas by letting you set specific filters to find products on Amazon which match those criteria. And because product discovery is typically the hardest part of product research, this tool is great for beginners. The other tool for niche analysis is the Chrome extension, which allows you to quickly and easily analyze product ideas. And I'll get into that later on in the video. And for those of you looking for advanced strategies to do product discovery, I'll leave links to videos in the video description below. There's also a link to a coupon for AMZ Scout there as well. All right, so if we jump into the AMZ Scout product database, you can see here on the left that you can choose specific categories that you wanna find products in. Now, I've pre-selected a few of these, and these are the common categories that I like to sell in. And the categories that I haven't selected are categories I wanna stay away from because either they're too competitive, they're gated categories, or there's too much competition, or there's liability involved such as topical creams, uh, food or anything you ingest or put on your body that I want to stay away from. And I've also selected to only find standard sized products so that the fees and shipping costs are lower. Now you're more than welcome to search for oversized products as long as you're aware that the fees and shipping is higher and that you've calculated your profit margin so that there's still money for you to make. All right. And for the seller type, I don't select any. It doesn't matter for me what pops up. So it doesn't matter if it's Amazon that's selling the product, if it's FBA or if it's FBM. All right, now on the right side is where you can set the specific search criteria. And for the specific strategy that I use, there's only certain filters that I use. So for the price, I wanna look for products that are within 15 to $50. And it's important that you look for products that are at least $15 and higher. And that's because anything lower than $15, once you subtract your unit costs, shipping, and the FBA fees, there isn't much money left for you to make. And in my opinion, the bare minimum is at least $5 profit per unit. Now I've set an upper limit of $50 because products that cost more than $50 tend to no longer be an impulse buy. So people are put more thought and research into it. So I stick within 15 to $50 price range. The other filter that I use is the estimated sales. And this is tied in with your planning phase that you've done. And so if you're looking for products that typically make around $10 profit per unit, and you wanna make $3,000 profit per month, then you need to find products that sell at least 300 units per month. So that's why the minimum here is set to 300. Now reviews is how we gauge the level of competition in a niche. And if the majority of listings on the first page have a lot of reviews, then that niche is way too competitive and it'll be difficult for you to get your listing ranked onto the first page. And it's important that you get your listing ranked on the first page because over 70% of all online sales take place on the first page. And so that's why you wanna find listings that have less than 75 reviews. So that's why the upper limit here is 75. And the ratings is the feedback score left by the buyers and it's a score out of five. 
And I've set a limit here of 3.8 as a max so that it's pulling up listings that have room for improvement. And that's a great way to differentiate your product. So you always wanna make sure that you're differentiating and not just selling the exact same product as everybody else, because that's a sure way to fail. So a good way to differentiate is to fix a problem, add a feature, improve the quality of the product, or bundle. Now, the last one here that I use is the weight. And again, that's tied in with the standard size product tier. And so you wanna find products that are less than two pounds. So the upper limit here is set to two pounds. All right, now one pro tip here is I also use this search field here with negative keyword matches. And I'll leave a list to these keywords in the video description below so you can copy and paste it for your own use. And I'll scroll through here real quick and you can see there's a minus sign in front of all these keywords. And these are keywords where if they appear in the listing, the listing will not show in the search results. So these are mostly like clothes or food items or topical creams and uh, name brand products that are trademarked or copyrighted that I don't want to sell or I can't sell. So I add them to this keyword list so they don't even show up in the search results. And this will help dramatically cut down the amount of products in the search results. So you're not wasting time wading through products that you don't want to sell or can't sell. So now if we click on apply filter, you can see now the product database tool has pulled up a list of all the products in the Amazon marketplace that match those specific search criteria that we set in the filters. So what you wanna do here is what I do is I look down the photos and the title column here, and I specifically look for products that catch my eye, specifically products that are strange and out of the ordinary. And typically items that I easily recognize or I know people tend to have around the house those are gonna be products that are way too competitive already. So I avoid those immediately and don't even do any further analysis on them. So as you scroll down here, I look for products that look strange, out of the ordinary, or I don't recognize. So for example, the first one that I see here is this Egglets egg cooker. This looks pretty cool here. So what I do is I'll click on it and queue it up and I'll come back here and I'll look for some more until I have two, three, four, or five items queued up and then I'll do the niche analysis on them. And as you can see here, here's an electronics item and I stay away from electronics because they tend to break or people don't know how to use it. So you get a lot of returns or you, you have to deal with a lot of tech support. So I stay away from electronics items. And so if we continue to search, we'll look for strange and out of the ordinary products. One thing to note is this Gucci belt. This is most likely a fake or knockoff product. And you don't want to get involved with products like this because you'll get your listing shut down or you'll get sued. So avoid patented, copyrighted, or trademark products. Okay, and here's another one that looks pretty interesting. I have no idea what that is, but it looks like a cool and strange photo. And uh, it looks like it's a plant watering bulb. So let's cue that one up. And... This looks kind of strange too. I don't know what that is. It's like a ribbon or something. Uh, they're ice cool scarfs. That's pretty cool. Never heard of anything like that. So let's cue that one up. And actually here's a product here that's patented that a lot of beginners about a year ago got into. And this is the full face snorkel mask, which are actually patented. So it's important that while you're doing product research that you make sure that the product that you find isn't patented because you'll invest a whole bunch of money into the inventory and then you'll find out that you can't sell it. You'll get your listing shut down and in the worst case you'll actually get sued. Okay so let's move on. Okay here's something that looks kind of strange and out of the ordinary. It's a um, chainsaw teeth sharpener. It's a cool photo so let's click on it and cue it up. All right, now that we have a few items queued up, we can move on to the niche analysis. So the first one that we queued up is this uh, egg cooker. And what you wanna do here is figure out what the shortest, broadest, and most relevant keyword is for this niche. So in this case, I'm gonna assume that it's egg cooker. So what you wanna do then is come up here, make sure it's set on all departments, and then do a search for egg cooker. Now it's vital that you choose the correct keyword phrase, otherwise you're looking at the wrong data. So what you wanna do now is look through the search results and make sure that the majority of the listings are indeed that product. And I can see right away that it's not. It's a bunch of different style products here. So it's not the correct keyword. And a good way to help you figure out that out is either look at the other listings in the niche or AMZ Scout has a Keywords Explorer tool. 
And if we come over here, we can type in egg cooker and it's going to tell us the search volume on Amazon. All right, and we can see here that egg cooker has 560,000 search results. And if we come down here and take a look, most of these don't apply to that product. Uh, this one actually might, the egglets egg cooker. So if we copy that and go back to Amazon and search for egglets egg cooker and look through the search results, we can see that this is now that product that we're looking for, okay? So now we can pull up the AMZ Scout Chrome extension tool and it's gonna pull up all of the data for all the listings on this first page. And at a single glance, we can determine if this niche is a viable niche or not. Okay, so you can see here, it's listed all of the listings, as well as the data that we're interested in, which is the price, the estimated sales volume, as well as the number of reviews. Okay, so the first thing we wanna check is to make sure that the average price is at least $15 or more. Now, if we take a look at the column here and manually look at it, we can see that the price point is well below $15. It looks like most of them are around eight or $9, okay? And it's important that you don't look at the average price up here because some very high or some very low listings will throw off an average. So you wanna actually manually look at this column here. Now at this point, since it already failed one of the search criteria, we can move on to another product idea. But in this case, I'll move through the search criteria so we can see what other data points we need to analyze. Now the estimated sales, we need to make sure that it's at least 250 to 300 units per month. So if we look down here, we can see that the majority of them are actually only doing 50 or 60 or less units per month. Okay, so it also fails the sales volume. Now, if we look at the reviews, this is how we gauge competition. We wanna make sure that at least seven out of the top 10 listings have less than 75 reviews. And we can do that by counting it. So if we look here, we have one, two, three, four, five listings that have more than 75 reviews. So this is also way too competitive of a niche, okay? Now, one more data point to look at is whether or not this is brand dominated. So you wanna make sure that there isn't one or more sellers that have multiple listings on the first page, like three, four or more listings. And if we look at the brand column, we can see that there isn't one or more sellers dominating this first page, okay? So it's not brand dominated. Now, one thing I wanna point out here is that while you're analyzing niches, you need to remove or not include the sponsored listings. Now, the sponsored listings are the ones at the top here that say sponsored, as well as at the bottom. So if we scroll down, you can see there's some other listings here that say sponsored, here and here, and as well as at the very bottom, here and here, okay? These are placed here through the PPC campaigns. So they're there artificially from their bids. You only want to look at the organically ranked listings. Okay. So if we pull up the AMZ Scout Chrome extension, you can see here that it starts with the number three listing here. So the sponsored listings are already removed. Now, if yours is showing the sponsored listings, you can actually click on the filter button here and then check mark the hide sponsored options and then click apply. And that'll hide the sponsored listings from this window. Okay. Now, one other column that's super valuable is the available from, and this is the age of each listing, and this helps you gauge whether or not this niche is saturated or not. So if the majority of these sellers are new, like within the last two or three months, then this is potentially a saturated niche that you want to avoid, okay? And this also ties in with the saturation score. As you can see here, it's a one, and it's a score out of 10. So the lower, the better. And this tells you how many other sellers have discovered this niche. So you can see in the last month, only two people have found this niche. Okay, so now let's move on to the next product, which was these plant watering bulbs. So again, you wanna pick out what the shortest, broadest, and most relevant keyword phrase is. And in this case, I'm gonna guess that it's just plant watering bulbs. Make sure you choose all departments and do a search and scan through the search results to make sure that the majority of the listings are these bulbs, and it looks like it is. Now we can pull up the AMZ Scout Chrome extension, and now we can analyze the data. So again, if we look at the price, make sure it's at least $15 and higher, and it looks like that it is. And if we look at the estimated sales, wanna make sure the majority is at least 250 to 300 units or more, and it also looks like it is. And if we look at the reviews, make sure seven out of the top 10 have less than 75 reviews. There's one, two, three, four, five. So this is again, also too competitive. 
All right, and we can see that um, Wyndham House has two listings in the top 10, so it's not brand dominated. All right, so this is a bad niche, it's too competitive. So let's move on to the next product, which is this uh, ice cool scarf neck wrap. So I'm gonna assume the shortest keyword is cool, no, let's do uh, cool scarf. Let's try that, okay? Let's do a search. And this looks like the product, but let's actually go over to the Keyword Explorer and see what it says. And it looks like cool scarf and cooling scarf are about the same. So it looks like it is the correct keyword phrase. So let's go back to Amazon and pull up the AMZ Scout Chrome extension. And let's analyze the data. So if we look at the price, it looks like the price point is borderline too low. It's around, I'm gonna guess like 10 or $11. And then if we look at the sales, the sales is way too inconsistent. You can see some are selling hundreds or thousands, but also some are less than a hundred, okay? And the number of reviews, we have one, two, three, four, five. Again, it's too competitive here, okay? So this is also a bad product idea. And so let's take a look at this last one, which is this chainsaw teeth sharpener. So that looks like the correct keyword phrase. Let's make sure we choose all departments and Paste that there and let's scan through and make sure that it is the product and it looks like it is. Pull up the Chrome extension and we can see that the price point looks like it is at least $15 or more. Estimated sales, the majority are at least 250 to 300 units or more, so that's great. And if we look at the number of reviews, we have one, two, three listings that are over 75 reviews. So. This is awesome, we actually found a great product idea, right? So if we take a look here, the estimated revenue for the top 10 listings is pretty good. They're all, I would say $7,000 or more. It kind of falls off here uh, because the price point falls off as well. And there isn't a brand that's dominating this niche, which is good. So in my opinion, if you can increase the value of this product to raise the price point, uh, you can probably increase your profit margin too and get some of the sales from these top listings. So this is a borderline okay product. It's just that the sales kind of drops here. So I'm not too confident in it. But as you can see, just in the few minutes of doing product research, we found a product that we can do a further analysis on to make sure if it's viable or not. Okay, now what's great about the AMZ Scout Chrome extension tool is that it puts a lot of data right in front of you as well as some tools so you can analyze niches quickly and easily to cut down this product research time. So for example, if we were looking at this product idea, we can actually look at the individual listing here and look at the actual profit by using the profit calculator that's built in. So if we click on this, it's gonna pull up the data for that product and what's important is that it pulls up the product size and weight. And that's how the FBA fees are calculated. So you can see this seller is selling theirs for $14.99. And we need a product cost to actually figure out what our profit margin is. So what you can do is actually go over to Alibaba and do a search for the chainsaw teeth sharpener. And then if we scan down some of these listings, we can get a good estimate for what this product costs here. So we can see this sharpener is anywhere from two to $5.89. Uh, this is uh, $2.00. This is $3-ish. This is also around $3, also around $3, okay? So a good estimate I'm gonna say is around $3 for this. And a good way to estimate the shipping is to just double the uh, unit cost. So let's just say it's $6 total for this product. And if we go back to the profit calculator and we put in $6 for the product cost, we can see the total fees is $7.05 and the profit per unit is $1.94. So that's obviously not enough of a profit margin. So what you can do is try to raise the price by fixing a problem, bundling this with something, adding a feature, or improving the quality somehow, right? So in order for this to be a viable product, you need to sell this for at least $19.99, so there's a $6 profit margin, okay? So you can see how convenient this profit calculator is. Otherwise, you'd have to use the Amazon FBA profit calculator, which you need to have an Amazon seller account to use, and there's a lot of copy and pasting in order to use it, okay? Now another great built-in tool is this trends button here. So for example, if we go back to this cool scarf niche, if we click on the trends button, 
it pulls up the Google Trends graph and it'll show you historically how much volume has been searched over the years. And you can determine whether or not this is a seasonal product. And you can see that during the winter months, November through January, there's a hump uh, every single year. And this is over the last five years here. So you can see that this is a seasonal product and you always wanna avoid seasonal products. So this makes doing product research quicker because you don't have to go to Google Trends and do the search yourself. All right, so such a powerful way to do product research quickly. Now, another advantage here is if you look at these products, you can actually add them directly to the web apps product tracker. So if you did find a good viable niche, you always wanna make sure you track the top 10 or 20 listings to verify the sales volume because the estimated sales here are estimates. So you wanna make sure you product track the top listings for about two weeks to make sure that the sales volume matches what you expect to see here so you can make sure you hit your profit goals. So if you click the add to tracker button here, you can actually add a multiple of them. And if we go back to AMD Scout and click on the product tracker, you can see that it added all those listings to the product tracker. And if we click on the graph option, it shows us the historical sales data here. And you can see that on October 1st, they sold 161 units. Now, one thing I want to point out here is you don't want to use the exact filters that I'm teaching here in this video. Once you understand what these values do, you want to switch it up so you're looking for products that no one else is looking for. So for example, instead of looking for precisely $15 to $50 price range, you can look at the edge cases. So in this case, look at $14.67 through $15.25. I just made up the sense side of it. So I'm looking at the edge cases here because most people are gonna use rounded numbers, right? So you wanna think outside the box. Another option here is instead of using the minimum sales of 250 to 300 units, you can also use the revenue field here. And revenue is typically around one third of the monthly revenue is gonna be your profit margin, okay? So one third is gonna to go to fees, the other third is gonna be your unit cost, and the remaining third is your profit. So if you're looking to make around $3,000 per month, you want to find products that are selling at least eight to $9,000 minimum, right? So you can use that as a search filter as well, okay? And another cool way to look for products where you can differentiate is to look for products that have a poor listing. Now what the product database has done too is it's analyzed all the listings and gave them a score. And so you can look for products that have a low listing quality score and it's a score from zero to 100. So for example, you can set a max score of 70, okay? And so you can mix these filters around so you're looking for products that other people aren't necessarily finding. All right, I hope you found this helpful. The key to finding profitable products quickly is to learn what all the filters mean and what they do. And to not just follow my exact steps and filters, but to not be afraid to play around with different search criteria so you're not looking at the same list of products that everyone else is seeing. If you want to test out AMZ Scout, they do have a trial period for both the web app and Chrome extension, and there's also a coupon in the video description below to save you some money should you decide to upgrade. And if you're looking for ways to do advanced product discovery, check out these videos here. And let me know if you have any questions. Post them in the comment section below. I answer every single one of them. All right, thanks for watching. If you found value in this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And make sure you click that bell icon to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. There's also a link in the description to our community forums, which you should totally join. And as always, thanks for watching.